Over the last few years I've been wearing quite a lot of rubber. My wife knows about it, but the fact is at my size and age it's not a very pretty sight. But I'll tell you what, it's worth it, and here's why. Shut up and sit down. Let's cut to the chase. This is a superb boat. In fact, I'll go further. This is one of my favourite boats of 2014, no question. And not simply because of a blistering pace downwind when you hoist the kite, sheet in and light the blue touch paper, but because she's simple. One of the simplest high-performance boats that I've sailed. She's simple and easy. The secret of her success starts with her deck layout. When you first step aboard, you could swear that she hasn't been fully fitted out. There are so few lines. Look around a bit more closely and you realise she's the product of some very smart thinking. She's been designed to be sailed by two or three people and to do this means keeping the cockpit clear and there are two key details that make this possible. The reverse kicker on top of the boom and the main sheet that comes off the boom rather than the cockpit floor. For anyone who's sailed a 49er, a 29er or a modern skiff, this is second nature. But for oldies, it takes a little bit of getting used to. She's also been designed to be trailed and has a lifting keel, a launching trolley and a combi trailer. In essence, she's a modern Flying 15 but with much more performance. Designed by Brian Bennett, she was first launched in the States where a class has already taken hold. Now she's on this side of the pond, built by Ovington Boats, with a fleet growing in the UK. The bottom line is that this is one of the most exciting small racing keelboats to hit the scene. So when you're drawing up your wish list of boats that you want to go and test, Put this one right at the top. But I guess I have one admission to make. You don't really need to wear rubber to sail the VX1. Shame. <laughs> 